There's your weather video for this Sunday, January the 21st. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray, and it was on this date back in 1940 that Birmingham was in the middle of its coldest 14-day temperature period ever, even beat the um, 1899 cold wave. Uh, the temperature over that 14-day period in mid-January uh, in 1940 was 22.5 degrees. Now, to put that in perspective, uh, over two days this week, we were at 22 degrees average temperature. So you'd say, well, wow, this week must have been a really high-ranking, you know, entry on the uh, list of coldest periods in Birmingham history. But unfortunately, well, I guess really fortunately not, uh, over two days uh, we achieved that, that low reading. But that is only the 86th coldest um two-day period in Birmingham history. So really, um, you know, really wasn't that bad. It was in here and out of here. And the January thaw is on its way, but it's cold this morning. We're going to look at that in a second. Uh, look back at the old Birmingham news. Remember papers, newspapers? We had two of them a day and even multiple editions of this one. Uh, it seems like there was a Dixie edition and a home edition and a Metro edition and you could run down to the corner store and get a different paper three times in the same day. Uh, a lot was going on back in 1940. Uh, of course, the world was preparing, uh, uh, rushing headlong into World War II. Uh, there's talk about Churchill and uh, Churchill and and Hitler and um, you know all sorts of problems that were going on then. The Russians were attacking the Finns, and um, here it was just cold. Um, that is uh, what was going on uh, back then on this date in 1940. Now, early, early on this Sunday morning, the 21st, recording this uh, after 12 o'clock, uh, here's what's going on around the region. Big high pressure. This anticyclone uh, centered here over the um, Ohio River Valley early this morning. Uh, readings below zero. Look there in Iowa, uh, Minnesota. Uh, 10 below this hour at Waterloo. Um, across Minnesota, they're in the single digits to below zero. And uh, here in the south, we're chilly. Uh, looking across the rest of the country, uh, rain in California. If you're watching the NFL game tonight, you saw that it was raining in Santa Clara for the uh, Packers and the 49ers. Uh, some wintry precipitation there over the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but here in Alabama, we're just... Um, we're just cool and clear on this uh, Saturday evening or early Sunday morning. Temperature of Birmingham down to 15 degrees now. Uh, Fort Payne now checking in at 9 degrees. They're the only place uh, in the state of Alabama right now that is in single digits. Looks like Jackson, Tennessee is at 3 above zero. Murray, Kentucky at 7 above zero. Even along the Gulf Coast, it's getting chilly. Um, looking like 30 degrees now in Gulf Shores at Jack Edwards Airport. Naval Air Station in Pensacola reporting 32. It's uh, 27 in Greenville, or I'm sorry, that's uh, Evergreen, 22 in Greenville. Greenville, you know, can typically be the coldest place uh, in South Alabama. But um, as we go toward morning, um, those readings are going to be um, even colder. Um, this is uh, where we expect those readings to be uh, by uh, later this morning, around uh, 5, 6 o'clock, uh, expecting single digits across the northern third of Alabama from Jasper uh, up to um, the Shoals and over to um, uh, Scottsboro there in Jackson County. We should see single digits uh, 13 to 17 across central Alabama. Uh, 17 to 21 across South Alabama, area around Mobile Bay uh, will probably stay um, above freezing, uh, or not really above freezing, but not as cold as all of um, these other regions. Uh, looking early this morning at the uh, winter weather advisories and things, these are right here wind chill advisories. The National Weather Service in uh, Huntsville has one for the Tennessee Valley. Up till 9 a.m. this morning. Also, the northern part of central Alabama, uh, there from Hamilton, Lamar, or, or from Marion, Lamar, uh, Winston, uh, Fayette Walker, over uh, to the eastern counties. Um, winds have died down tonight, but they've been pushing those wind chills into the single digits. 
uh, National Weather Service offices in Mobile and Tallahassee have them in effect across South Alabama. You see everyone there except for um, the coastal uh, sections of Mobile and Baldwin County. So, well, that's a weird look. Um, you know, most um, zones in Alabama are whole counties. Well, not in Mobile and Baldwin. They have two different zones. And really, I think it may be even three different zones. I'd have to check that, but it looks like that's what's going on here. Um, I need to know that. Uh, here we have um, hard freeze warnings. Uh, Weather Service Huntsville's given up on hard freeze warnings. Um, but um, hard freeze warnings are in effect tonight uh, for all of uh, central and south Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, southern Georgia, uh, Mississippi, uh, the northern half of southeastern Louisiana. So, uh, in effect, almost everyone uh, is in uh, that situation. Now, upper pattern across North America, going to the GFS, early on Sunday morning, it'll look like this. Big trough over the west producing uh, that activity, that precipitation that you saw all along the west coast, all the inclement weather, but they're loving it because they need the moisture. Uh, never complaining about that. Big trough leaving the east coast that has uh, uh, dumped some, uh, caused some record amounts of snowfall over New York. Uh, some uh, amounts uh, there in the Tug Hill Plateau, 76 to 81 inches, over 60 inches at Buffalo. It was uh, quite a week uh, over about a six-day period there uh, for that area. That system's moving out. Ridge building uh, over um, much of the middle of the country, and that's going to lead to a January thaw. Uh, you say, well, what's a January thaw? Well, generally you'll have colder weather early January, and there'll be this period around the third week where we get a warm-up. And it's a climatologically real thing. It's going to be a real thing in Alabama this week. See the high pressure uh, there uh, dominating and intensifying over the Great Lakes states and New England. The trough over the west um, begins to kind of work its way into the desert southwest and uh, eventually into Texas. But you see that it weakens as it goes. Uh, big uh, subtropical ridge here uh, over the greater Antilles and the Bahamas. And uh, that's going to be uh, really effectively pushing up that warm air uh, into Alabama in the southeast. This is Thursday uh, at noon. You see another western trough there beginning to kind of materialize. But with this broad fetch out of the southwest, we're going to see a lot of moisture moving into Alabama. And as you see, is this uh, little trough and its, uh, and its attendant energy moves into Alabama in the southeast. We're going to see... Uh, quite a bit of rain in this coming week. But then as we go into week two, uh, another big ridge over the west uh, comes over the top there into the Great Lakes. And uh, uh, that um, system over the east coast uh, finally begins to move out. Looks like another big system out toward the end of the two-day or the two-week period. And we'll be looking at some more rain and potential thunderstorms for Alabama. Now, model fans, let's go day by day. This is Sunday, today the 21st, looking at the precipitation type. Uh, uh, over every six-hour period from the GFS, high pressure there centered uh, near the uh, Kentucky-West Virginia border. Um, and it uh, will be gradually losing its hold as we go through the week. We stay dry today. High temperatures are going to be uh, in the upper 30s to lower and middle 40s across the area. We'll drop back into the middle 20s tonight, uh, lower and middle 20s across the area. It'll be another cold night, but not quite as cold as it's been the last few nights. And certainly not as cold as it's going to be by, by later this morning by the time you see this video. Now, as we um, go through Monday, you see we're staying dry here in Alabama. Our winds are shifting to the southeast. Our clouds will gradually begin to increase. The GFS thinks the rain will begin to move into western Alabama there before dawn on Tuesday morning. Uh, and that's a, that's a plausible forecast. But I do point out that the uh, European is a bit slower. This is at noon on Tuesday, and the rain is still not into Alabama. So the, the European, at least on this 18Z run um, that's available to us here on uh, Saturday night, uh, shows that you know, the precipitation may not, uh, begin in, may not begin at all on Tuesday, except for a few scattered showers late in the day, and that's out at the end of the, or late in the overnight, and that's out at the end of the period. So the GFS starts earlier and is heavier earlier, um, with precipitation going into Wednesday, bit of a respite for South Alabama, but the northern part of the state 
is experiencing a good bit of rain uh, back through Mississippi and Louisiana. That rainfall intensifies during the day. I would think Wednesday and Wednesday night are going to be the wettest day of this week, even though we'll have rain chances all the way from Tuesday through probably Saturday morning. You see the the uh, big ridge of high pressure has set out there, uh, has set up out there near Baha- near uh, Bermuda, and um, broad southerly flow uh, coming around it, just pumping the moisture levels up. Uh, across Alabama. This is, uh, you know, checking for some instability. Looks like a little bit of instability along the Gulf Coast there Wednesday afternoon, maybe up into uh, parts of central Alabama. Doesn't look too worrisome. Looks like um, some of the atmospheric profiles could support hail on Wednesday. More of the storms more elevated in nature, uh, you know, meaning not surface-based, and, and we'll be watching that. But I think our bigger concern is from flooding. This is Tuesday, you can see. And going back a little bit on this map, you can see we're in really dry air this morning. Uh, shockingly dry air by precipitable water values. They're, you know, some 10, 20% of normal. Uh, but that's already beginning to change. And, and really it will begin to change in earnest by Monday night. Moisture will be streaming in here continuing to increase during the day on Tuesday, um, approaching some, you know, 200 to 250% of normal. Um, those um, readings there in purple uh, working toward 300% of normal. And you, you saw that on Tuesday night into Wednesday. That activity is getting into Alabama, and as it does, that means the uh, potential for heavy rain and possibly flooding. Now, we see some dry air beginning to work in from the west uh, by Friday. Those rain chances should, should drop a little bit, but they, uh, the precipitable water values uh, kind of pile back up as all that uh, moisture converges again by Saturday. Finally, it's moving out. Some drier air wraps its way in here, and it uh, looks like we'll be um, back to a dry and cool weather for the start of the week two period. Moving out in time, you see those precipitable water values moving up again, though, uh, as we go out toward the end of the period. Uh, moving back to our, our march through the surface maps here. Uh, this is Wednesday night uh, of this week, showing that heavy rain over north Alabama, another band of it setting up over western Alabama there Thursday during the day. Um, and it looks like that rain will, um, you know, kind of edge to the southeast Thursday night into Friday. A few scattered showers remain, though, maybe one more wave moving through to our northwest uh, here by Saturday. This is uh, about 9 o'clock Saturday morning. Surf slow moving through the Ohio Valley. Sets off uh, snow there over northern uh, Indiana into western Ohio, southern Michigan, uh, into the uh, Lake Erie region. Uh, that's where they've been enjoying uh, all those lake effects. I don't know about enjoying. That may not be the right word. Scattered showers stay with us through, through Saturday night. Really, now they may hold into Sunday even. I thought we'd have them out of here by Sunday. But I think they'll be on their way out by then. Uh, the rain will certainly uh, be welcome, but it will be wearing its welcome out uh, by the end of the week. Going into the week two period now, looks like we start off dry. High pressure there over Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. Uh, for Monday, the 29th, into Tuesday, a um, little um, disturbance riding over the uh, ridge there and uh, passing through the mid-Atlantic states. A uh, little clipper system bringing some snows to that area. We're staying dry through that following Wednesday. Looks like the following Thursday we're dry. And uh, then uh, finally a storm system begins to spin up over the western Gulf. Looks like it's moving in here for Saturday the 3rd. This system at different times has had a stormy look. We'll have to watch it. Um, the ridge is kind of keeping it at bay, but that lets a couple of waves of, a, of a potentially heavy rain uh, move through our area uh, once again. Now, this is um, precipitation <coughs> over the next week. Through next Sunday morning, it looks like rainfall amounts over Alabama could be fairly generous there. Somewhere between 2 and 5 inches, perhaps a few isolated amounts approaching 6 inches. Um, we continue to use the need the rain because we are you know, still digging out a drought. And then if we go through the end of the two-week period, you see those rainfall amounts. They're approaching you know, 8, 9 inches in some spots. But it looks like everybody at that point would be somewhere around 4 to 5 inches. That would be above normal. And um, really... We would not be complaining 
uh, about that at all. Now, temperatures off the National Blend of Models for Birmingham, uh, a good average for the area, uh, shows us uh, 40 for the daytime high on Sunday. Uh, we'll drop to around 26 on average across the area tonight. Um, your Monday about 51, nice 10 degree warm up there on Tuesday. We start out about 42 Tuesday morning, go up to 61 in the afternoon. Wow, 67, 68, 66 on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday will feel like a, a true heat wave. Not much in diurnal temperature range there on Thursday. Morning low of 60 and uh, the afternoon high of 68 with all that rain. Then we sort of go down the other side of the roller coaster. 55 Friday morning, 50 Saturday morning. Then we gradually fall through the 40s and the 30s. Uh, daytime highs during that week two period will generally be in the uh, middle and upper 50s. Now, I think I covered everything I needed to cover there. Weather Brains, the weekly netcast that's all about weather. Had a great show this, uh, this past week. Uh, another great show planned uh, coming up for this Monday night. Uh, we're going to be talking to Mark Sutt at HurricaneTrack.com. Fine, fine uh, hurricane tracker, good friend of the podcast. And uh, we're going to be really focusing on the influence of parents. Uh, Mark's parents were instrumental in his interest in weather and hurricanes and fostering that interest. And uh, we all as parents uh, have um, that that responsibility too to um, do that for our kids. So we'll be talking about how that works on Weather Brains, the weekly netcast. It's all about weather. Get it wherever you pick up your podcast. Well, that's your weather video here for the Sunday, the 21st edition. Uh, I have notes on the blog, a uh, complete update on the forecast coming up at noon. And uh, anything breaks loose, we'll be right here to tell you about it. James will pick back up tomorrow morning with two a days. Scott will see you next Saturday. I'll see you next Sunday. And I'll look forward to that opportunity until I get it. As I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.